Hey everyone, it's Ray here, and in this video, I got a really cool thing for you. So, you probably all have heard of ChatGDP, it's been roaming around the internet. Did you know you can actually solve coding problems on both Yusuku and on Code Forces? In this video, we're gonna go through it and see, I want to solve a few problems for us. So the first one here is fence painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this problem, right? Not the sample output, but just from here up to the output format. And I'm gonna ask ChatGDP, write code to solve this problem. enter now i'm gonna you know it's gonna take a little bit of time to load i'm just gonna um skip past that because there's no point in you just sitting here and waiting it's kind of boring just sit and wait but note that it takes about 30 seconds to a minute to load this okay so here it gives a code uh it has a and b a b c and d reads in our input and it even puts comment as to what it's doing now if you want to read the program you want to read the problem statement you can i'll link it with the video but as you'll see these comments if you read the problem these comments make complete sense and tell you exactly what it's doing and it prints a total length now one thing you might realize that this chat gdp messed up is that it's reading the input from file input output instead of or sorry from standard input output instead of file input output and this code is in python i can often a python we'll switch to a different language in a little bit and you'll see but right now what i wanted to do is change the code so that it reads the input from paint.in and writes the output to paint.out. Okay, again, I skipped the waiting part. This was a lot faster actually than the previous one. Um, it did it in about like five, 10 seconds, so not that bad. And as you can see, it opens up the file. It uses the output file. And yeah, oh yeah, I forgot to mention earlier, it also ex explains what this code was doing for both the normal and for the file input output one. All right, so it, it gives us this code. All right, let's copy the code and let's see the code perform. And again, I'm gonna skip past the waiting part. So it's just gonna be done grading. Oh, great, it's pretty fast right now. No need to skip past. All right, ChatGDP officially solves this problem fence painting. That's awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna look at another problem. Uh, this is way too long words. And this is a pretty easy problem. Um, what's the difficulty? Yeah, it's about 800 difficulty. So again, if you just copy this from right here, just copy this part into ChatGDP, ChatGDP solved it. And I already did that. And this is a submission that ChatGDP uh, gave us and it solved the problem now you might be wondering okay but this is all in python it's a different language how do i make chat gdp uh, use a different language well what you can do is you can just ask chat gdp to generate them in a different language so i'm gonna do that here change the code to c plus plus all right so again i'm not gonna make you wait for it it's just it's done um this actually took a quite a lot of time it took a little over a minute a little over a minute to get it but it generated the entire problem in C++, and it was used in the file and put up it. And this is for the paint problem again. So again, it's great because you can just build on top of it, right? You know, it's first started by this, we asked it to use file and put up it, and then we asked it to change it the code to C++, and it creates this code. Um, cool, so let's take care of this problem. Now, one thing I want to do is, because we know we can solve these couple problems, um, this is an example of a problem promotion counting here that it was actually not able to solve. And so it can't solve all useful problems and it can't solve all coding problems, but it can solve some. That's the point I'm trying to make in this video. So, and this, this, is, this problem here, you know, we copied the whole thing in, or from here to here, it did not get the correct solution. And you can try it on your own, see if it works for you, maybe it will. Um, but with this one, I tried it, it did not work. So another thing I wanna try is for code forces, as you might find, as you might find here, when it solved this problem, it solved the 800 difficulty problem, it's working on easier problems. So what I want to do is I want to check through, I want to go through a div4 contest. Let's find the latest div4 contest that occurred. And let's just see if ChatGDP can solve the problems. This will be fun. So let's just add ChatGDP to solve the problems. Chat. Write code to solve this problem. And it might, it might be a little weird because of the way like A, B, and C are formatted, but hopefully, hopefully it should still work out. Um, 
Okay, and this number is, this problem is actually pretty simple. I'd be surprised if it uh if it didn't work. All right, while that's running, let's open up the other problems. So we have a through G open. All right, copy code, and let's just submit it. And while problem A is in Q, let us get problem B lined up. And as you can see, you know, for problem A, the comments it makes is pretty good comments, right? Ah, problem A worked. This code worked and successfully solved problem A. Yay. All right. And yeah, the number of test cases, read in three integers, find the medium, put the medium, you know, pretty good. Uh, okay, problem B is running. And again, I'm not going to make you wait. Oh, never mind. It finished it right about now. All right, here is an example solution in Python. Perfect. Copy code. Submit to code. And while B is submitting, let's make it solve C. Ooh, B got it wrong. Okay, yeah, B was wrong, it looks like. So it did not solve B correctly. Let's look at C. So if it can't solve C, because if I'm looking at the number of solves here, uh, I'm pretty sure if it can't solve C, it won't be able to solve D either, just because if it can't solve both B and C, then it probably won't be able to solve D, but who knows, right? So A had a difficulty of about 800, and it was able to solve that. Uh, B's difficulty was also 800, and it missed it. Okay, what is C's difficulty? Okay, another 800. So let's see if it gets this one. Oh, damn, this one uses a nested loop too. Oh, and it got it wrong too. Okay, so I got problem A and I missed B and C. So I guess I give you sort of an idea on what the capabilities of it are and what they aren't. Now, what do I think this means for writing contests and doing contests going forward? First of all, is this allowed or not? In Usico, it is definitely not allowed. It's definitely not allowed to use outside resources. And so this obviously includes ChatGDP. You are not allowed to use ChatGDP when solving problems. Um, for code forces, I don't think they've written the rules specifically on ChatGDP. I hope they come out with a rule that saying you're not allowed to use ChatGDP to solve problems. Um, but obviously, the better solution would be to write problems that cannot be solved by ChatGDP in the first place, right? ChatGDP, uh, if ChatGDP works to solve a problem and you say you can't use it, well, then the people who cheat and use it are at an advantage to the people who don't cheat and don't use it. So I would prefer that they write problems that cannot be solved by ChatGDP um, in the first place. Now. You might run into a case where there are some parts that you can probably use with ChatGDP, um, even for higher problems, like at the Usico Platinum level, right? Or at the Gold level. So you might say, uh, write code to count inversions. Um, and if your language is C++ or Java, you might say, write code to count inversions in C++. Okay, so let me update it, that's fine. Okay, and that might be like part of a big problem, right? Now that is that is a different thing, which again is not allowed in Usico. And I hope C will say, or sorry, I hope Code Forces will say it's not allowed in Code Forces either. But um, I hope Code Forces will say it's not allowed either. But the thing is, when you're writing code for something like to count inversions, this is something that can be Googled anyways. So here, ChatGDP is not adding an extra disadvantage, right? You could already Google how to do that. But when it comes to being able to just like, copy paste the program in and get an answer that works. That is something that ChatGDP does that you can't Google, at least not at this point. So I really hope that all these contest platforms, used to code code forces and all the other ones out there, write problems that cannot be solved by ChatGDP. Because otherwise it's not really hard to people who honestly solve the problems. And when you're practicing for certain, you don't want to practice by copying the problems as ChatGDP. You're not really learning anything. So when you're practicing, 
And oh, we got our inversions code here. Cool. So when you're practicing, you want to make sure you're writing from scratch. And if you're stuck, if you're stuck, you can use ChatGDP to help you on practice. Next week's video will be on exactly that, how to use ChatGDP to help you prepare for Usico. Because I feel like it's a really great tool to prepare for Usico now that I'm looking more and more into it. And it's definitely something that I didn't have when I was preparing several years ago. But now that you have it, I'm gonna show you how you can use it. Basically like a coach to help you with different parts of problems that you're stuck on, help you explain things, help explain things to you that you don't understand, how to do all that cool stuff with ChatGPT. Look out for the video next week, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that you will be notified when I post that video next week. Take care for now, see you later, bye.